Life is a journey, a winding road with twists and turns that unfold. We start out with good intentions, but sometimes we lose our direction. We take on jobs, we start projects, but as time goes by, we feel neglect. We're drained, tired, feeling lost, wondering what the true cost of finishing what you started, of staying the course, not departing. But what if we're no longer aligned with what we truly have in mind? It takes courage to make a change, to pivot and rearrange, to finish what you came for and open a new door. Leaving behind what no longer serves is how we find what truly deserves. Our time, our energy, our passion in a way that brings satisfaction. So take a moment, reflect and see, are you where you want to be? If not, take a step to explore what it means to finish what you came for. As a school board trustee, I embarked upon a journey to improve our struggling district. I initially started out with the thought of finishing what I started, aiming to address the financial and academic challenges our district faced. However, when the pandemic hit, immediately I knew I had to shift. Amidst the chaos, I had to shift my mindset to finishing what I came for. It meant moving beyond the mere goals and embracing a larger vision for our students. It meant that the district's failing scores was now my determination to create a lasting impact. See, with resilience and innovation, I led our team as the board president into a new beginning in unprecedented challenges. See, we had to work together and we had to create goals and guardrails that kept our students at the forefront of the mission. It was no longer about votes, but it was about the lives that was happening behind the doors we could not see. And we had to make choices that would support them through remote learning. Together, we forged a path towards the success with the mantra, student outcomes don't change until adult behaviors change. So we focused on us first so that we could be our best selves for our children. As a result, our district moved from a dismal D rating to an impressive B rating in just two years. See, collectively we saw what was possible when we moved through adversity and we worked together and shifting the focus of finishing what we came for, I understood that hope meant everything and possibility was everything when I was focused on the goals embedded in my purpose. And so our students thrived, receiving high quality education, resources and food in spite of the pandemic. And so when we shift who we are in our purpose, I learned that I now am called in everything I do to finish what I came for. So have you ever had a moment that you started something and you said, hmm, I don't want to finish, but I think I have to keep going because they are expecting me to finish. Have you ever started something where you said, I'm quitting because this no longer serves me? See, wherever you find yourself, you're probably absolutely right. So I encourage you, I invite you to embark upon this journey of finishing what you came for. So are you ready to challenge the status quo and redefine what it means to be a finisher? Today, I want to introduce a concept that will redefine what it means to revolutionize how you see your goals and find fulfillment in life. We've been taught that if we blindly push through things just for the sake of completion, that it defines our path to success. However, I invite you to embrace a new concept of finishing what you came for. 
we've been conditioned to believe that persevering at all costs and sacrificing our own well-being or pushing through goals that no longer define our true purpose is success. But what if I told you there was a better way? You see, finishing what you came for is about setting clear intentions. It's about aligning your actions with your purpose and having the courage to let go of what no longer serves you. It's about being intentional and strategic in your pursuits that are aligned to your true values and aspirations rather than mindlessly pushing through for the sake of completion. But let me be honest. I'm not advocating for quitting or laziness. Quite the opposite. See, finishing what you came for takes courage, resilience, and a deep understanding of who you are and who you've been ingrained to be in this world. See, it allows you to make clear strategic choices to say when something is no longer serving you and being able to pivot and prioritize what needs to happen in who you've been gifted to be. See, what, I, what I've learned is in our new space of finishing what you came for, there are, there's a five-step process. And the first step is defining your purpose. Purpose is defined as the definition of why something exists, why you're created. See, how many of you had your parents who put you in sports when you were younger and they said, well, no, you're going to finish what you started. I paid for it, you're going to start it, and you're going to finish it. And somewhere along the lines, you found yourself and you said, I no longer want to do this. I, don't, I thought I wanted to, but I no longer want to do this. But then we found ourselves doing what? Showing back up for practice every day, still doing it when we did not want to do it, but we did not want to disappoint our parents. Or there are times of what research calls the sunk cost fallacy, where we continue to do something because we've already invested, the, invested time and resources in it. So we continue to do it. You know the sunk cost fallacy where we stay in a relationship um, and we're no longer valued in that relationship. You know, when they no longer see who we are or we outgrown them, yet we don't hold ourselves accountable to who we said we were or wanted to be in a relationship. That sunk cost fallacy. Or you know the sunk cost fallacy where we've been on a job for 22 years and we have two more years to retire and so we just sit through it and show up that sunk cost fallacy, or the sunk cost fallacy where we go to medical school because our parents wanted us to go to medical school, even though we had other visions and aspirations for ourselves, but we wanted to change the trajectory of our family, so we pushed through it even though we were miserable. That sunk cost fallacy. See, research says that if we continue to blindly push through things that no longer serve us, it'll lead to burnout and diminished motivation. See. When you define who you are and your purpose, it allows you to move into a space yeah. so that you can make clearer goals and intentions about what your next steps are. Mm -hmm. Which leads to step number two, discernment and letting go. See, discernment is when you are inside of your task or your projects or your work or your relationships and you find out that something is telling you that this is not where you should be. Something is telling you that you need to move past. That is your intuition. It is your ability to understand that purpose is trying to take root, but you're not home listening. So in the space of discernment, it is looking at when to say no. Ask yourself, when you are approaching new tasks, you have to ask yourself, is this still accomplishing what I set out for it to accomplish? And is it still aligned to my values and goals that I had from the beginning? And if it's not, it's okay to take a step back after you reflect and say, this is no longer serving me, I choose to move on. But in the process of letting go, we find ourselves going through tasks to what I told you before about pleasing people. See, what I found about pleasing people, that we think pleasing people is rooted in love, but it's actually rooted in fear. When we find ourselves doing things for the sake of people, we find ourselves in a miserable state of being because we've just sacrificed our own well-being and our own true north. So, letting go, setting boundaries, and then prioritizing what matters 
whether it's on your job, whether it's in your relationship, research says when we prioritize, we find fulfillment, we find better well-beings of where we're going and, and, and it creates clarity. So the next step is to embrace adaptability. Now here is where the rubber meets the road because in this phase, most of you are saying, well, I do finish what I started and I'm not gonna quit. But let me show you where it changes in finishing what you started. Finishing what you started is rooted in character building. See, character building means I have a strong work ethic. It means I persevere, I'm committed, I'm gonna finish, I'm gonna push through. Why? Because either I'm gonna prove it to you or I'm gonna prove it to myself, but it has something to prove. It has a what mentality attached to it. What if I don't finish? What if I don't win? What if they don't accept me? What if I'm not acknowledged? What if, all these what ifs come with finishing what you started because sometimes when we start things, they were really for other people's attention. But what if that what if is pushed to the side and I look at finishing what I came for, finishing what I came for is a soul building. And so when we focus on the why, the why says, why did I start this in the first place? Why did I get into this relationship? Why did I take that job? Why am I still in a space and I haven't had any movement forward, yet I'm still here? See, why challenges the inward character of who we are. It allows us to actually reflect and move past and see when I say why, now I can ask what? Why am I doing this job? So now I can ask another question. Who does it serve? Mm -hmm. Then I can ask another question. How are they being served? Yeah. And see, then I can ask another question. That's where the what comes in. What's at stake if I don't do my why? Mm -hmm. See, that, that allows me to be my best self because I'm always challenging me to be the best me I could be in that situation versus finishing what I started to show up because it's rooted in what if and negative self-talk and in the ability to bring my representative, and we talk about representatives. So when we embrace adaptability for our point three, is being able to ebb and flow through the journey, knowing that you have to recalibrate a new path for yourself, knowing that you have to show up and being able to put people around you that will speak truth into you and not say yes to you. So when we are on this journey, there are things that we will learn, and when you're embracing adaptability, guess what, you may fail, but Failing is your first attempt in learning. Yes. Yes. And when you lose, you don't lose the lesson. Mm. And so as we move into the next one, is finding meaning and purpose. Finding, the, finding meaning and purpose and finding meaning in the process. When we understand our why, it allows us to reconnect. Finding meaning in the process, there's a phenomenon that go, that's going around called quiet quitting where people silently disengage from their jobs just for the sake of their own well-being. However, for, for many of you, as you move into that space, if you're reattaching uh, yourself to this new mindset, that may be the first step. But let me tell you, be responsible with it. Because many people are going to work and they're getting these checks and they're checking out. Which means you are putting others at risk when you quiet quit. So if you don't quiet quit without a plan, then you're planning to stay, show up for yourself and you're creating failure for everyone else around you. And so it's a selfish intent. So if you're embracing responsibility and finding purpose in the process, know that you have to trust the process and see the process through. And when you are committed to showing up in the process, I can give you an example, uh, Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan, we all know, is the GOAT of basketball. He went on and he went on to do great things in basketball, but guess what? He wanted to pursue his childhood dream of playing professional baseball. He wanted to go out and leave professional bas basketball. And so he had much criticism, and despite all that, he wanted to finish what he came for. Mm -hmm. And he went and pursued it. And once he finished that, he returned back and, and reclaimed his dominance on that court. See, he learned to prioritize, he learned to follow his purpose, he learned to pivot, he learned to persevere, and above all else, he trusted his own process of who he was. So as you move through, the last step is impacting others. We do this work for the sake of everyone around us. This is not about you, it's bigger than you. So. 
when you are walking out each day, remind yourself that I need to release myself from finishing what I started to adopt the new mindset of finishing what I came for. Today, I invite you to reflect upon your own journey. Today, I invite you to, uh, to embrace a new approach of finishing what you came for, that in every aspect of your life, you will not think about starting something, but you will think about finishing it, because our days are numbered, our time is limited, but if I only had an infinite amount of time, I would finish what I started, but because I know time is not infinite, I finish what I came for so that I can make an impact on the world. It is not about you, it's not too late. You can redirect where you are. You can stop what you're doing if it's not serving you, and you can start something new, or you can keep doing something if you change the mindset of finishing what you came for. So today, I invite you to embrace finishing what you came for and make the impact because the world is waiting. Thank you.